to be getting into Elijah McClain's death. A um, lot of, a uh, lot of, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's been a, a, a swirl of misinformation <laughs> on this topic, as there always is when it comes to topics like this. Um, you know, you, you, you see an innocent black person get murdered by the police, and the media does it, the usual thing that it does, which is start spreading lies, and it's like, oh man, this guy got a parking ticket 38 years ago. And, you know, he's a criminal is what he is. He got a parking ticket, 38. Did you see the parking ticket? Oh, he was mean on the playground when he was three years. He called somebody a poopy pants. Can you believe it? And they justify the murder because, you know, uh, somebody got called a poopy pants uh, 30 years prior. The thing with Elijah McClain, though, is it's very, very difficult uh, to pin all those all that crap on him. Because the, the kid is squeaky clean and he is a kid. He's not like an older person with a history of uh, 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 of criminal offenses or what have you. Not that the, the, having a criminal offense justifies the police, uh, you know, using an illegal choke code and, uh, and pumping you full of uh, horse tranquilizer, which is what they did to Elijah McClain. So here's basically what happened, right? Just to recap what's been going on with Elijah McClain. August 24, 2019. Uh, uh, three police officers basically attacked Elijah McClain. I watched the video. I'm not going to play the video because it is difficult to watch. Um, and But I do encourage you guys to go and check out the video uh, if you would uh, if you would like to. Um, I will uh, I, I, yeah, I will uh, put up the link to the uh, Mint Press News article at the end of the, the video here. Uh, but um, the video is tough to watch, but it very clearly shows that you see Elijah McClain just kind of walking. And then the cop goes, hey, stop. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. Um, and then they attack him. And then they put him in a chokehold. You can hear him say, I can't breathe. You can hear him say, I'm an introvert. This is a violation of my personal space. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then they at the end of the video, because he won't stop talking because he's nervous and is an anxious person um, and doesn't know what's happening or why he's being put into a chokehold, uh, they pump him full of ketamine, which is a horse tranquilizer, um, and, and you know, mix that with the chokehold, which is cutting oxygen and blood to his brain. Uh, a couple days later, he was brain dead. So they killed him. They killed him. And you can hear the officers too, right? McLean keeps saying, "I'm an I'm an introvert. This is a violation of my personal space. Uh, I don't I don't I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, I I please I didn't do anything wrong. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe." He says that over and over again. And I don't know what it what the cops are trained to do when they hear the words "I can't breathe." Like, is the training for cops like, "Oh, when you hear the word I can't breathe, push harder on their neck." What the fuck is going on? Because in my head, like, even if we're, even if, like, 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 I have, when we were kids, my uncle would, like, tickle us a whole lot. That was one of the things that, like, they would do, uh, and we would laugh. And the second, like, we would be like, I can't breathe because I'm laughing so hard. The the air of, air in my lungs has expired. Uh, my, my uncle would go, cool, we're done with this game. It's not, let's go even harder until you pass out. That's not the instinct that normal fucking human beings have. Like when somebody goes, hey, you've hit my limit. Please fucking stop. You know who you know who says, oh, this person is asking me to stop. I should do this more fucking psychopaths. That's who do that more. So essentially, cops are being trained to be psychopaths. We have psychopaths with guns roided up attacking innocent civilians on the street and then justifying murder because this is what they do. They justify his murder. That's what they do. That's how the cops fucking operate. They justified his murder. It's in the fucking video, right? I should just share the, the link to the article that we're going to be talking about here. Let's Let's do that. Let's share the link here. Uh, because the video is in there. I, 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 you know, you don't have to watch the, the video right now. Uh, that would be, 
Uh, I don't know if that would be advised. Here we go. I'm posting that in the Rockfin as well. But that's the link right there uh, to the Mint Press article if anybody wants to check that out later. But the video shows the cop is like, oh, we don't know what he's talking about. So we kind of had to subdue him. And, you know, this guy, like, he's just saying a bunch of random shit. Yeah, because he's fucking scared because he didn't do anything. Do you really think that somebody that was like a hardened criminal and was taking part in suspicious behavior would say, hey, I'm an introvert. Please don't invade my personal space. Please don't do that. I don't like it. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I didn't do anything wrong. What's happening? Why is this happening? Innocent people don't fucking do that. And the cops were like, yeah, he's just saying random shit. So I, we fucking choked him. But this goes to show why we need to defund the police. Because the police, as overfunded as they are, look at an innocent person that is clearly an introvert that's having an anxiety attack. Dude, I've done that when I've like panicked, you know, and this is not the exact same thing, but like I, when I was in uh, high school and college, like if I liked somebody uh, and I would go talk to them, I would over talk because I'm like, oh, I can't believe I get to be, I, I think this person is all, and like, I would just over talk. I, it wasn't until later that I learned how to control that kind of behavior. It's just an overwhelming anxiety attack and they don't know how to fucking deal with that. So they go, oh. He's saying weird, random stuff, and we don't know how to do it because society has stigmatized and made mental illnesses not normal, even though everybody fucking has mental illnesses. Let's put him in a chokehold. Let's put him in a chokehold that has been banned by, by every fucking uh, police organization uh, and has been taught to us by the Israeli military. Let's put him into a military fucking chokehold. Let's put a civilian into a military fucking chokehold, and that's totally fine. And there are people justifying his actions. And the cops even say, oh, I, I didn't know he was saying random stuff. Maybe he was reaching for a gun. I don't know. He, he I, Maybe he was trying to reach uh, for my gun. I don't even know. I don't even really remember what he was saying, but I, but I felt like he was reaching for my gun. You felt like? Did you have evidence that he was reaching for your gun? Because this kid is 5'6", he's shorter than me, and he weighs 140 pounds. So he weighs less than me, and he's anemic. He's an anemic vegetarian. You know, he needs more iron in his body. Somebody that needed an iron supplement, the cops can't fucking handle. And we want to give them more money? No, 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 no. These cops need to learn how to be trained. Fuck that. The cops need to be defunded so that actual fucking mental health professionals can help people like Elijah McClain. defund the police, get rid of a bunch of their militarized weapons, and have a psychologist, a trained therapist, to go on patrol with them. Hey, you already have a bunch of fucking money. You already have hundreds and millions of dollars. Most police departments do. At the least, they have hundreds and millions of dollars. In the um, in the virtual show, and, and this video is going to be coming out in the next couple weeks, uh, I talk about how Austin has defunded the police to help homelessness, and they were defunded by like a little over a hundred million dollars, and they still have a fuck ton of money left over to pay cops salaries and take care of a, a bunch of equipment. Like they 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 were defunded by a little over a hundred million dollars, and they still have a fuck ton of money left over. How is that rational? My girlfriend and I just started watching Battlestar Galactica. She's she's seen Battlestar. I, I have not. Uh, I'm really digging it. We just started it. So no spoilers here. Uh, we're like on episode four. I watched the whole mini series that they did. Um, and so we're like on episode four or five or something along those lines. Um, but, you know, the lead one of the lead characters, Edward James Olmos's character, he's a military man, right? He's he's a commander of the of the only um, uh, only uh, offensive spaceship that are that's left in the uh, in the human fleet. Uh, it's it's the new Battlestar Galactica, and Edward James Olmos comes out and he says, uh, "Look, the military can't be the police. Uh, you, you know uh, that's because the military is here." to to fight um you know outside enemies to to take over 
to to ensure like you know uh, threats internationally uh, are taken care of uh, external threats are taken care of the police are supposed to be there to protect and serve they are not supposed to be uh, getting rid of threats and when when the military becomes the police then the the people becomes the threat and I was like boom fucking early 2000s they're fucking nailing it you know and they're in a fucking way more hostile so they have like killer robots that are trying to murder the entire human race and even at that point when they're in quite possibly a state of fear that is much more heightened than we are now that's much more heightened than what police think they face in the field they were still able to make a rational decision of saying we should not have to militarize the police. That is not the role of the police. In America, that is the role of the police. And we've been fucking saying that shit for how long now? Are there, There's evidence in media that's out there that's talking about this shit now. And these cops are still getting away with it. So at the end of it, what do they do? Right? What do they fucking do? They pump this kid full of ketamine and they tranquilize him. Why? Because he was moving his feet a little bit because there's a giant fucking police officer on top of his neck. And he's saying things like, I can't breathe. I don't know what's happening. Uh, I think at one point he said teamwork is dream work or something along those lines because he's panicked. And what he needs is people to get off his fucking neck to sit him down and be like, hey, here's what's going on. This whole interaction would have been prevented if they had a legitimate fucking therapist there. Someone that knew how to deal with mental health issues. But where's the narrative, right? Oh, well, he shouldn't have been walking in that neighborhood. Why? Because he's black and he's not allowed to be in Aurora, Illinois? What kind of racist bullshit is that? Oh, well, he didn't belong in that neighborhood. Why? Because he's black. Fuck off. Look, yes, every so often, you know, we'll be sitting on our porch and we'll see somebody walking up our street or walking uh, on the perpendicular street and we'll go, hmm, I wonder who that is. Oh, look, they're going into this house. Oh, that's interesting. They haven't had a visitor in a little while. We don't go call the cops. Stranger danger. We're adults that need people with guns because there's somebody we don't... Do you know how many fucking people you don't know in the world? If every single time you didn't know somebody, you called the cops, everybody would be dead. But that's what happens in a fucking hyper-individualistic society that is trained to not have a sense of community. That thinks the sense of community is socialism or communism and it needs to be eradicated because that steals your freedom. You're, well, your freedom's already being stolen away from you by militarizing the fucking police and justifying wars across the world to kill black and brown people. So then all of that xenophobia and all of that hatred spills back into the, into the country you're supposed to be protecting. This is what happens when you have an imperialist empire that's a crypto-fascist state. Sorry, but that's what the cops are holding up. Also, the cops come from slave patrol, so of course they're going to go and kill black people. Your 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 core tenants are rooted in fucking slave patrols. Something that America is supposed to be over? Doubtful. The the narrative doesn't work, right? Because uh, the narrative of, of of oh the scary black person. This kid is five six, one hundred and forty pounds, and plays the violin. To shelter cats. Milo's ears perked up when I said he plays the violin to shelter cats. You can't, there's no narrative to spin. The cops murdered an innocent, innocent, like of all the most innocent fucking black kids. And if there is some kind of justification to this, you're just an asshole. There was no justification for any of the murders that were committed by the police of people of color. They all used illegal chokeholds. They all fired their weapons unnecessarily. But that's because they're trained to do that. They're trained to do that. 
they're trained to think uh, of uh, it's us versus them. So they constantly think it's us versus them, us versus them, us versus them. So the second something happens where they go, oh, stranger danger, pull the guns up, put choke hold. That's how they're trained to react. That's not protecting or serving. That is a fucking militarized murder. All right. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to look at some comments here. Uh, Holly says they were laughing about it. Yeah, they were. Um, there, there was another note, too, where I think uh, one of the cops. Let me pull up the gentleman's name here. Uh, I think it was Jason Rosenblatt. The three cops, Nathan Woodyard, Jason Rosenblatt and Randy Rodema are the three uh, primary cops. Um, they played something for him. And he fucking laughed about it. Like he laughed that that this kid was killed. Why does this person still have his job? Stevie, you say uh, we'd have better odds of being safe without cops than with those armed thugs in the street. Yeah, that's basically what they've become. This isn't protecting or serving. More in, I mean, in 2020 alone, uh, 1,127 civilians were killed. That's just in one year. Civilians were killed by the police. There were 18 days out of 365 days where the cops weren't violent. That's mind-boggling that's less than like 0.1 percent of the days john it seems like uh there's if there's ever an issue the only option poor people have is mercenaries with guns as their first responder yeah they were they were trying to do uh they were trying to demonize that because the cops started shooting rubber bullets at the black lives matter protests there were some lefty anarchists pro pro gun lefty anarchist groups that came to essentially act as their protection uh, and then they basically said, oh, look, Black Lives Matter is now partnering with anti-government white supremacist organizations. But what do you want them to do? You guys are basically about to fire live rounds. Rubber bullets are supposed to be shot on the ground and bounce back so that it decreases the speed and um, uh, impact. But you're firing it directly at people's faces. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're turning non-lethal weapons into very lethal weapons. It's still a fucking bullet. It's still being fired at 100 meters per second. Uh, John, we need to address the rampant poverty and lack of resources in communities and the crime uh, issues they'll solve themselves. Well, yeah, this, yeah, the, uh, all of these things kind of roll into the criminal justice system. Um, being corrupt, being broken, and being uh, just viciously racist. And that's what it was built for, right? 94 crime bill, the three strikes rule, the war on drugs. All of this stuff was really just built uh, to, to, as Hillary put, Clinton put it, uh, Hillary Clinton said, we need to bring them to heel. That's, and that's what it is. And that's how people fucking think. And that's how these elites fucking think. Uh, and what they also do is they manufacture this divide that poor black people and poor white people have different issues. Police don't reduce crime. They enforce arbitrary laws against poor people and protect rich people's property. Yeah, and that's exactly where they came from because black people were considered the property of the plantation. And when they would run away, uh, they would hire poor white people to go hunt them. And they became slave patrols. There was one police strike in the history of the United States in 1919. Uh, and the police were so reprimanded by it that there will never be a police union that will advocate for a police strike. There will never be a police union that will stand in solidarity with any aspect of the labor movement. In fact, the police union will actually advocate for attacking the labor union. Uh, the settlement should come from the cops' pockets. I think it should come, yeah, directly from uh, the Aurora Police Department. And these cops should be fired and banned from being a, a part of law enforcement. Oh, also, they should have their uh, gun licenses revoked, and they should be put on a blacklist uh, for, for owning weapons ever again because they clearly don't know how to use it. And they're, and they're clearly fucking psychopaths that are out to murder people. 
having a therapist, talking things through, and using nonviolent goes against America's narrative and values. Yeah, you can't you can't claim that you're the strongest country in the world if you admit that there is a problem that you need to address. Uh, and a lot of lot of love for for Battlestar Galactica here. Aiden Aiden's throwing some love for Battlestar Galactica. Uh, Stevie's thrown some love for Battlestar Galactica. Holly's also there. There's just a lot of Battlestar love. I'm really, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying the show. Uh, yeah, and and I like the way that they kind of incorporate some uh, sociopolitical topics into this very very dystopian future uh, that really doesn't have anything to do with with the politics of humanity. It has everything to do with survivalism. So it's very interesting that they they kind of wrap that stuff around. I'm 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 enjoying the show. Uh, I just wish, and maybe this changes later in the show, but boy, if Edward James almost could just whisper less in that show, it would make it a lot easier. <laughs> but Edward James almost loves to whisper in that show, and and it makes it. Uh, and I'm like, what? What did you say? What's happening? You're so quiet. Uh, let's get it, John. Uh, uh, cops should be held to higher legal standards when they fuck up, as they're granted special powers within. The society cops are maniacs well they don't john uh because of uh qualified immunity qualified immunity is is basically why they don't get held to a higher standard and the supreme court you know um and the most liberal of supreme court judge judges like uh ruth bader ginsburg is also somebody that won't overturn any sort of qualified immunity case uh because they don't want to fuck with the cops they don't want they're they're rich they're rich liberals why would rich liberals want to fuck with cops that are going to protect their stuff? That's all the cops are. They're armed guards for rich people's stuff. John, you pointed that out earlier in the stream. Um, let's look at this one here. Uh, you can't even go back to the Constitution. It was set up that way from the beginning. Uh, police and their unions act as guard labor to keep workers uh, and poor in line for capitalists. Yeah, and we saw that in the Boston police strike of 1919. And guess when, when the cops went on strike... Uh, and they did this in Seattle in 1919 as well. Guess who they fucking used as uh, as the police force? College students. They got poor college students uh, to pretty much be scabs and go police to police. This is what the system does. It's always it, it's it's going to manufacture poverty. It's going to keep people in poverty so that you have no choice because you're so desperate. Uh, that when, when, you know, there is a labor action, when cops realize that, you know what, we're, we're being thrown under the bus here, they either get booted out of the system, or if there's actually a movement within the rank and file to push back against the police unions, that there are civilians that they can, uh, call upon who are so desperate and destitute that they'll take the work. And that's how the system works. That's how capitalism works, right? And like Holly says, police unions aren't legit. The only legitimate police union that's ever existed was in Boston in 1919. And when they asked for better conditions to be in, uh, they were fired upon by the United States National Guard with live rounds, demonized as communists, replaced by college students, fired from the force. And then who who got who got the job? Out of work military veterans with PTSD, and that's how the police operate. Let me pop over to Rockfin, and then we'll move to the next section here. Uh, Sarah, another uh, pointing out, uh, pointing out. Uh, oh, Lee Camp did an interview the other day with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he had uh, one of the protesters on his show. I have not caught up with that. I need to I need to catch up on on a couple of Lee's videos, uh, which I'll probably be able to do that today. Uh, but uh, Sarah also says, "Good point. Granting power to the people with people's people with weapons with immunity is a walking disaster." Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and we have shows, we have television shows that are viewed by millions of people that are saying that, right? Um, and they have to take a kind of a. a a, a non a little bit of a nonchalant stat, stat, uh, status to it because you can't just outright come out and be like, well, we should defund the police and have better mental health care and so on and so forth. Uh, I mean, the most the amazing thing that I kind of saw was, look, these people, the, the episode that I watched 
uh, the crisis they were dealing with was a water crisis. They were running low on water and there were people that were like starting to get a little violent and they were like, yeah, the military is not going to get involved in that. I mean, this is desperate times and they're saying like, yeah, the military is not the right people to, re to deal with this situation. This should be done through an act of diplomacy. And this should be set up with like legitimate police that are that whose goal is is not to uh, wrangle people and put them in prison, but to maintain order, but maintain order for the sake of the populace, not for the sake of rich people being scared that the, you know, the civilian population is going to rise up, essentially. Um, so, yeah, great comments, guys. Thank you for leaving those. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do... Uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.